Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Transatlantic, part number GH-2945, US-3. This is a drive-in style ball catch. This is a ubiquitous, common, typical uh, ball catch. This is seen pretty much in exclusively residential construction, although you could see it in hotel work as well. This ball catch is meant to be installed in the top rail of the door and is meant to keep uh, a pair of doors, or, or it could be one door as well, uh, a single door, uh, but in the closed position, closed and latched, so to speak. It's not latched, it's just secured. Um, secured is not the right word. Just keep it in the closed position and allow it to permit there unless an excessive force of not so many pounds would be applied. The point of the matter is you'll see this everywhere. And these do fail. Um, they do, the spring inside of here does seem to fatigue or fail with time, or people manipulate the uh, adjustment here to affect the projection of the ball to such a point where maybe the spring comes out and they've lost a part. Um, you do need to adjust these uh, when you're doing your installation, and it's basically putting an instrument into one of those notches and either counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, residential construction, um, master suites, pairs of doors, you know, closing off a sitting room from a bedroom, whatever it is. Same scenario in a hotel uh, sort of application. It's going to include the ball catch. It will include this black slip sleeve that's here so that when you install it into your wood door, you're just doing a pressure fit. A couple of tangs on either side. And why I install these I'll get a block of wood, compress that ball bearing down, and I'll tap it down with a mallet. That's what I would do. Your strike is here as well. Um, that will go into the header if you're doing uh, pairs of doors. Okay, if you're doing a single door, this will go over on the strike jam. You can certainly do, do single doors with these. If you had just dummy trim, why not? You could have a residential application with a linen closet, like a you know, a 1-0 door or a one foot four door, something quite small. 1-0 um, is pretty small. Um, a one foot four, maybe, typical. Um, dummy, single fixed dummy handle, knob, roller latch. Why not? It would work perfectly for that. I would want to locate that ball catch in position or in the same sort of vertical height to be complementary with my hardware, my pulling hardware. You'll get two screws that are included with this, and that's obviously for the strike. Let's take some dimensional properties of all of this material. Overall height of the strike, two and a quarter. The overall width of the strike is about an inch and three eighths. These are measured from the center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip. That's gonna be about seven eighths of an inch, okay? You're going to want to position the center line of this with the center line of the thickness of the door and where that resides. You will need to simply calculate where you're going to position that stuff. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Um, now, the ball catch portion itself, the business end, as we say in the business, that's about an inch and an eighth overall on the body. My caliper tells me that I'm probably going to want to drill a hole about one inch in diameter, or my eyes tell me. Yeah, my caliper is telling me without those tangs, I'm at point eight nine five. 0.895, so just heavy on 7 eighths, and you'll want to just carefully tap that down there. So um, maybe drill, a, well, I was going to say maybe drill a 15 16 hole. You don't want it any bigger than that um, at all. The outside of those tangs is about an, is about an inch and a 30 second. The o yeah, you know what? Forget that 15 16 action. 7 8 because the OD of the head is 0.979, so it's not even 1 inch. So you're going to definitely want to be at your 7 8 sort of size on that. Okay. Now let's switch this view to the screen view so that we can take a look at the supporting documentation for this item along with the extended description information as well. Okay, now here is the item that we're looking at, okay? 
little image. Our description, drive-in ball catch, maximum roller projection, 5 16 um, That's a common question. How far will the ball stick out, 5 16 That will help accommodate for not only the sort of opening and closing force that you'd like to have. Perhaps you want to set the projection a little bit greater so as to require more force for the door to come open. Um, I've had people order things like this uh, heavy-duty roller latches because their large dog would you know, reach up and put weight on the door to try to push it open. I like to keep it closed. Um, or maybe you're compensating for an excessive gap uh, between the door and the header or the door and the jam. Inch and three-eighths latch. I'm thinking that's the overall width of the strike. Yeah, inch and three-eighths strike by two and a quarter. Product brochure. Let's take a closer look at the product brochure. General hardware from Transatlantic. Transatlantic is a company that uh, my family had been associated with certainly from the 1970s and at some point in the mid 2000s or so that gentleman retired, sold the business, passed away, I don't recall. The primary customer service th rep there moved to Arizona and ultimately retired. Um, Transatlantic was purchased by someone else. Um, Transatlantic and Global Door Closers are two sister companies, and both of those companies were ultimately stuck under a name called Imperial USA. So the name Transatlantic is still out there. And I can tell you, I wish I had one of their old catalogs because they had an inch and a half thick of thousands of pieces of builder's hardware. What you see in this catalog is a paltry example of what they used to stock back when they were in Philadelphia in the 1990s and 2000s. We did a lot of business with them. Um, and I will, as an, at the end of this video, I'll tell you what we did a lot with them. So you can see down here, you scroll through to page six, they've got a ball catch, they've got a residential roller latch, and then a mortise style ball catch. Okay, that will still, it's going to be the same concept, except that this circular faceplate is now, you know, likely two and a quarter tall and one inch wide. It's my guess. I don't know the size of that. Magnetic catch, cabinet pull, signage. Okay, so the product catalog is nice. Allow you to see other stuff. Um, this manual style button viewer, uh, this is a doorbell. This is a door viewer and a nameplate. Uh, we sell a couple of those a year, and they are neat because this is a mechanical doorbell. And mechanical doorbells certainly existed in the 19th century, and they still make this one. And it's well made, too. Um, I'm thinking New York City, apartments, you're going to have a lot of these, is where I'm thinking these are going to come from. I don't know who manufactured them originally. It was probably a company like Corbin or Yale or some door hardware manufacturer from New England. I haven't run across that in an archival catalog from any of those, you know, usual suspects, so to speak. Okay. Now, let's see if we can round up some installation instructions. Now, we have been able to come up with some installation instructions. Um, and, you know, what's really most critical is that you observe your, obviously, your horizontal center line as seen here. Okay. But the... vertical center line needs to be observed as well and how you get there is in, you know in all fairness is how you get there um, you know you can take the door thickness divide it in half and then take the margin between the edge or the face of the stop and where the door resides and what I mean by that is you could Oops. Um, you have your frame and your stop. Just say it's single rabbit. Let's say that your door sits in here. You're going to take your door thickness, divide that in half. You're going to add the dimension from here to here. Okay. Then you're going to have a reference point. 
So half of the door thickness plus this dimension is where you're going to place that center line on your jam. But these installation instructions, they give a lot of steps on how to install these. So the height um, Step five, mark, center, mark outline of the strike and the center of the screw holes with a pen. Never use a pencil. Um, mortise this area on the frame 1 16th deep or until the strike sits flush. See frame prep picture below for more details on properly prepping, drill, attach strike. Okay, so it's the notes that we're really dealing with here. Dimension Y is one half of the door thickness plus eighth of an inch. So what they're, what they're concluding is that this dimension is an eighth of an inch. It could be. I'd say it's going to be a little bit less, but I'm also going to say it probably doesn't matter when we're dealing with a thirtieth, a thirty, you know, a thirtieth of an inch. Um, gap between door and frame should be at least an eighth. It will be about that, maybe a little, little less. An eighth is 0.125. It might be a hundred thousandths or ninety-five thousandths. If mounting on top style of door and frame head, place center line of the catch two and a half inch back from the lock edge of the door. So what they're saying there is if you have a pair of doors, I am a hardware guy, not an artist. What they're saying is from that door edge, go back two and a half inch to a center line. Okay. You can also take that width, divide it by, you know, divide it in two. Let's say it's an eighth or maybe three sixteenths and then adjust that accordingly. Okay. So there you go. Your, your overall height, that'll be up obviously to, for you to decide where you're going to, where you're going to put that. If you are installing this new into an existing application, maybe take an audit of those other locations of where you need to um, install hardware at and then put it at the proper height to match everything. You do want your strike height to match other existing applications so it doesn't look odd. Uh, not that you'll bump into it, but you know, an astute person you know, is going to subconsciously record that sort of information. Like a hardware person can't walk through an opening without noticing the hardware. So take an audit of the rest of the space and do it all accordingly. Very uh, typical installation instructions. You know, you want that center line to match. Uh, okay, so back to the item that we're looking at. This is not the item we're looking at, but it's pretty close. Now, finally, this link to the manufacturer's page here, that's going to allow you to see not only all the Transatlantic Co. items that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to their, uh, as well as a link to their product catalog, and a link to the manufacturer's website. Um, I also mentioned to you the name Global. That's their sister company, which is Global Door Controls. Their catalog is here. And then I also mentioned to you the name Imperial USA, and that's the, you know, I don't really know the organization, but Imperial USA is comprised of the global and the transatlantic items. So branding, maybe, I'm, I'm not really sure. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So this is, again, just a very generic garden variety item. If you're looking for something like this, I would not be surprised. People purchase these all the time. Um, and they do, they do break they do damage I've had people call me and say yeah I got up there with a butter knife trying to adjust it and I don't know what I did it all fell apart sure um, and now I can't get it back together absolutely makes sense these are dreadfully inexpensive pieces of material and I wouldn't uh, lose too much sleep over having to replace it people have called and said hey how do I get that part out of there yeah that's not easy um, pulling that piece out because it's compression fit when you get that tap down you're going to need to very gingerly kind of lever the item up and out. Um, you know, if you've got the ball out, you know, spreading something on the side of the wall is not really that easy. 
because um, you have really nothing to grab onto. You might try to get a hook underneath the item and then pull it up, but if I was going to try to coax that out, I would I would want to leave as much of it intact so that I could work from underneath the unit just a little bit. There is no elegant way that I'm aware of to get it removed from the door, but you do obviously want to proceed in such a way that you're not damaging anything. I might consider a, a long instrument that I might have a fulcrum underneath so that I can not damage the door and tip that up a little bit. Any questions on the Transatlantic GH2945 US3 drive-in style ball catch or any other Transatlantic product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.